Hey guys, I posted a photo of the book that I'm reading, I don't know, a week or so ago. It's called Color, A Natural History of the Palette by Victoria Finlay. It's a really good book. And I wanted to tell you that, but I also wanted to talk to you about something in the book. Now, just as a, a, just as a background, the book is about um, colors and their history and their place in society and different cultures and uh, that's basically it. It sounds kind of strange but once you start reading it, it it's really neat. Um, it's definitely a, a history lesson but an interesting history lesson. So you know it, it talks about the origins of, of colors and, and different different ways that the colors were used in different, you know, religious ceremonies and, <clears throat> and art and, you know, all of that and the materials that were used and, and how obtaining the materials might be a part of, of communities and things like that. And I'm, I'm reading the chapter, I'm not very far in, I'm reading the, the first color chapter, it's on ochre. And <clears throat> she is, she's, I mean, this woman has gone to the edges of the earth, it appears, to find out all of this information because this was just her passion. And she's in the book, she's currently in Australia visiting um, Aborigine peoples. And she's, she's kind of um, dealing with ceremonies and stuff, methods of getting colors and, and things right now that are closely held secrets within these certain communities. And, you know, she's trying her hardest to get all of this information and to gain access to places that, you know, normally people aren't able to go until this one part, she's, she kind of has a, a conundrum, uh, you know, a crisis of faith, so to speak. She, she gets to, I, I think what amounts to a library, and there's information there that she might be able to get a hold of in some sort of special collection, but she's questioning whether or not she should even attempt to obtain this information because the communities that the information is about don't really want the information out. They want it to be, um, you know, a, a secret within their communities. It, it's it's a part of a it's a part of their culture that they want closely guarded. And, you know, she's, she's sitting there considering, do I do it or not? And this was such an interesting consideration for me. And I'm really glad she included it in the book because she decided not to go after the information, to kind of put aside her own passion, uh, to respect the people that she is, you know, learning about and studying. I just thought that was a really interesting thing. And I kind of connected it to my own life because you know, there's always rules about where you can photograph and where you can't. But I've also, I mean, you know, you have to make that decision if you're going to do it or not. But, you know, there's also situations that I've been in where maybe I'm shooting a wedding, a religious wedding typically, where maybe the, uh, or the person doing the ceremony doesn't want any photos taken during the ceremony because, you know, they feel like it's, um, distracting or an insult or whatever it may be, whatever the case may be. Or, you know, I've photographed weddings for, you know, completely different cultures from my own who maybe where it's a, a modern meets old world kind of a, a wedding and some of the people there don't want their photos taken and, you know, some do and, and you know, the struggle of, of trying to figure out how to handle that. And that's just what made me really, really interested in this, in this certain, you know, few lines of, of the book. And it made me wonder about you guys. What do you guys think about that? Do you think that, you know, when in an effort to create your art and pursuing your passion, you know, do you justify certain things that maybe, maybe you wouldn't necessarily think was okay for anyone else or, or in any other circumstance? Or do you always follow the rules and stuff. I know, you know, people have asked me about like national parks and stuff, do I always follow the rules? And the vast majority of the time I do because 
the rules are there for a reason. And I want to make sure that my environment, when it comes to national parks and stuff, I want to make sure that all that stuff's around for years and years and years to come. So that's often why I follow the rules in those types of situations. But anyway, that is all. That was my long-winded way of asking you guys your question. Let me know. Let me know about what you think when you're pursuing your art or your passion, you know? Do you always follow the rules? 